Hey you guys, how are you doing today? This is once again Riz and I'm here to bring you up to date with the latest out of EOS Marketplace news. Now if this is your first time in our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below to get the latest out of EOS Marketplace news. And guys, just to remind you, okay, we are not financial advisors here at EOS Marketplace news, but we are a gathering of good news and rumors about EOS and other favorite digital currencies today that we have gathered from over 500 online videos and research links every day. So what we strongly suggest is that you guys do your own final research to make the best decision for yourself. Alright, so guys, uh, how are you doing? I hope you're having a great day today. I'm having a great day as well. Started my morning with a great cup of coffee and... I hope you had your breakfast since it's the most important meal of the day. But enough with that. I'm here to let you know and I will tirelessly, endlessly always remind you to check us out at preferredcurrency.news. Now, why I do this every day is because I found out that there are lots of great stuff right here. Lots of useful things that you can find in our daily newsletter issue that you can never find in any other website okay just take for example Donald's research list now Donald's research list I love this um, this analysis because as a beginner uh, for beginners it is very easy to understand it's very comprehensive it's very accessible and you can never find um, any other uh, material that is easier to analyze than Donald's research list and also not just that but it's you can find all the information that you need in just one setting okay so this is an example of donald's research list this is the preferred currency news spreadsheet now after clicking the uh green button that says open spreadsheet again this is in our newsletter issue now after you click that button it will lead you to a spreadsheet Okay, so this is how it looks like. Now, on column A, it will show you the name of your favorite digital token. Like, for example, uh, Bitcoin, Ox, One World, Ace, A-Chain, AdBank, ADEX, and all uh, other digital coins. Now, after right after that column, you'll see... Oh, but before we go to the next column, notice at the very top um, row of column A... It shows you the legend for each uh, token so for example if a token is highlighted red then that token had negative news for the day uh, for the day and if it has orange or 10 it's neutral if it's yellow they have fair news green for good news and those tokens that are highlighted blue are the tokens showing best news so you will see uh, why they have been highlighted with such respective colors because it will show you right here on this column its recent price in US dollars, its share of total market capital uh, or market value, its uh, Google searches compared to the last seven days, its 50 candle SMA movement, number of positive technical indicators, its 24 hour current volume versus price, weekly volume versus price and monthly volume versus price and the percentage that each token issues uh, or each token has been issued so it kind of summarizes up everything but you still find everything that you need in it okay if if that makes sense to you at all so um what i strongly suggest is that like me uh, i've gathered lots of information using this uh, newsletter so go ahead and check us out at preferredcurrency.news today all right you guys so in this video i would like to discuss with you the uh, headlines or the most interesting articles that we have come across the internet and included in our daily newsletter issue for today so uh, for today, we have UK money management application Emma makes crypto push. Also, what China's cashless revolution can teach the West about crypto. And finally, Russian central bank increasingly positive toward crypto. All right. So, by the way, all of these news are brought to us by PCN.today. 
All right, for our first news of the day, UK money management application Emma makes crypto push. Now, millennial-focused money management startup Emma Technologies is expanding into crypto. The startup is behind the Emma app for iOS and Android, which is an artificial intelligence fuel tool that until now has only supported financial institutions like HSBC, Bank of Scotland, Barclays, and others, helping users to avoid overdraft fees, manage debt, and save money. Now, it's integrating with a handful of leading crypto exchanges to give users the ability to keep track of Bitcoin and Ethereum balances. While Emma is only starting with the top two cryptocurrencies, they are making a statement by integrating some of the top names in this space, including Binance and Coinbase, as well as Kraken, Bitfinex, Bitstamp, and Bitrex. Emma co-founder and CEO Eduardo Moreni told CCN that it was in response to customer demand. And in a quote, he mentioned, quote, uh, yes, they were asking for crypto. Coinbase is more popular than several high street banks within our user base, so it was pretty evident we needed to do something about this, unquote. Moreni pointed to exchange APIs, which simplified the integration process. And he added in a quote, this is important because banks don't act in this way and are actually against in some cases. End quote. He said, adding that the company has plans to expand to provide individual addresses for Litecoin and Dogecoin, as well as expanding the list of exchanges. Meanwhile, Moreni told Tech, uh, TechCrunch that crypto is the next emerging asset class and pointing to a market opportunity of 3 million plus crypto investors in the UK region. According to Financial Times, nearly three quarters of the UK's population is predicted to manage financial accounts via a mobile device by the next half decade. Emma is a financial product and service agnostic and is looking to become a one-stop shop for managing money. Now, for instance, the new crypto feature is read-only, meaning that users can send Ethereum to one another. But the same holds true for, uh, for their traditional banking features. Now, the company's plan is reportedly to expand into write features both for fiat and crypto transactions that will also help users to save in crypto so based on behavior, uh, behavioral rules and risk appetite, Emma Moreni told TechCrunch, adding, uh, in a quote, We see uh, this as a huge opportunity and if we are those who help people understand and invest in crypto for the first time, it fits with our core mission. Unquote. It's another sign of a trend emerging in fintech startups like Square, for, inten uh, for instance, that don't want to be left out in the cold from crypto. Alright, so guys, do you think this is a very smart move in uh, UK's part? Let us know in the comment section below. Alright, so now let's go to the Far East. Now, what is uh, what China's cashless revolution can teach the West about crypto? Mm -hmm. Well, cash appears to be disappearing from China's teeming cities. Foreign tourists talk of struggling to buy things because they don't have Alipay or WeChat Pay installed on their smartphones and because merchants no longer bother to accept the banknotes they get from ATMs. Now, these stories elicit fascination among Americans, but not much more. Here in the U.S., many can't grasp uh, what the big deal is about digital payments. After all, pulling a credit card from your wallet isn't much more inconvenient than pulling a smartphone out of your pocket and it costs you if not the merchant no more than if you used cash now to the average american china system seems no different from venmo or paypal just more per uh, pervasive but as in their scene uh, horowitz partner connie chen told uh told pcn during a fireside chat at uh, HYTSA conference at Stanford a week ago, the real benefits of China's cashless uh, revolution lie in how this new software-based system of value exchange has become a platform on which 
um, new uh, business models can be built. Digitizing payments in this way at a very low cost enables micropayments and seamless integration across different service providers, which in turn means merchants can provide a variety of new services to customers over an app. Now, this helps to enhance the user's experience, boost loyalty and engagement, and build network value. Now, consider how Kugu, the most popular number of Chinese, uh, Chinese music apps, provides song coins to fans based on their level of engagement, which they can exchange to renminbi, the local currency. Now, essentially, by removing the intermediation uh, cost from the payment system, Alibaba Affiliate and Financials Alipay and Tencent's WePay Chat or, or WeChat Pay, which together now boast a billion users, according to the IT Group, have created a seamless foundation for a whole new digital economy. China says that this is where U.S. app developers are being left behind because their products can't integrate with this new model. The relevance of this, uh, the relevance in this for CoinDesk readers with their interest in the cryptocurrency and blockchain technology starts with the fact that this dream of seamless micropayments enabled system of heat there too uh, impossible new services is one that's often cited by crypto enthusiasts. So does China prove uh, that you don't need a blockchain to build a new internet of value powered by device-to-device -device exchanges in an internet things economy? Well, yes and no. Now, there is a very, il very real and illuminating limit to China's system. It can't easily go outside its borders. Although some U.S.-based providers are now creating services for Chinese tourists so they can buy things in America with their WeChat Pay or Alipay accounts, most of the activity on these networks happens in China. Now, most importantly, while Alipay and WeChat Pay are trying to crack other markets, there is no cross-currency facility. For all intents and purposes, this cashless revolution is happening within the boundaries of the renminbi universe now the reason for that is that unlike cryptocurrency systems the Chinese digital payment system is entirely built on the rails of the Chinese banking system which deals almost exclusively in the Chinese currency now in that sense it does share a foundation more like Venmo's and PayPal's whose accounts also settle back into the banking system that uh, than that of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Now, the big difference is that for a host of reasons, the, bank, uh, the banks don't charge the same kind of exorbitant uh, interchange fees to Chinese merchants that U.S. banks to, uh, do to U.S. businesses, allowing the digital payments providers to build, uh, build a much more fluid micropayments model on top. But the thing is, the Chinese banking system is essentially an, uh, an instrument of Chinese policy making. Now, the four biggest banks make up the bulk of the financial system and we are all a majority government or they are all majority government owned. Now, their uh, capacity to make profits essentially on the spread they charge for loans over what they pay for deposits is enabled by a carefully managed, uh, managed monetary policy. Now, People's, China's, uh, People's Bank of China set a ceiling for deposit rates often below inflation and can get away with that because it imposes capital controls on savers to prevent them fleeing low rates for higher earning currencies. Now, to to be sure, Ant Financial and Tencent both, uh, both have a variety of financial and banking licenses of their own, but their own financial profits are very, very much enabled by the same interest rate policy uh, framework that a wider state-run Chinese banking system is compelled to accept. 
For now, the policy uh, framework has sustained a quid pro quo uh, arrangement with Chinese savers who more or less support a banking system that otherwise eats into their savings because the benefits are manifest in continued, econom uh, continued economic growth and in services like those of Tencent and Alibaba. But for some time, there has been an expectation that China, in its desire to internationalize the renminbi, uh, will relax both its interest rate and capital controls, which could seriously undermine bank's profit margins. Now, if China were also to allow more private and foreign investment into the banks, would those institutions continue to subsidize the digital, uh, digital payments economy? Maybe, maybe not. Now, since we can't be like China, uh, maybe embrace crypto? Well, the bigger point is that China's circumstance, uh, circumstances are unique. There aren't many governments, if any, that could get away with this kind of control over the banking system. Others may have tried, but um, such as Venezuela and Argentina, and have destroyed confidence in their currencies in the process. So, do you think we will be doing the same with... Um, we will be uh, adapting to China's cashless revolution? Let us know in the comment section below. And lastly, Russian Central Bank increasingly positive toward crypto. Now, the Central Bank of Russian Federation recently stated that the devastating failure of blockchain projects this year had restored sanity to the sector. During the Finopolis Innovative Financial Technology Forum, the Russian banking chief Elvira told the country that the investors' cloud of enthusiasm has begun to wear off. In a quote, she also mentioned, uh, quoting, We are holding the Finopolis Forum for the fourth time. Earlier this year, used to witness a cryptocurrency fever everywhere, but now it is visibly beginning to disappear, unquote. The Russian banking chief's words come at a time where cryptocurrency is receiving a slowly growing acceptance in the country. Across the globe, crypto assets are gaining a somewhat higher acceptance among the people. Companies such as BTCC are finding new markets. The Russian head of state Putin also expressed his confidence in crypto transactions and further assuring that they would develop a framework for the same. However, he urged users to do so so with caution as control of cryptocurrency goes beyond national borders the structure uh, the structure would see bitcoin and other crypto assets recognized by the law all right so guys what do you think about a uh, russian central bank um becoming very positive toward crypto let us know in the comment section below and Guys, those are the things or the most interesting articles that we have come across the internet and we have included in our daily newsletter. And by the way, once you are a subscriber to, uh, subscriber to our daily newsletter, you'll be able to get the latest and be in the known 12 hours earlier before the rest of the world does. So go ahead and check us out at preferredcurrency.news today. My name is Riz and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you on my next videos. Bye!